Hey everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch and today I'm gonna to share my greenhouse with you. No, not my greenhouse. Man, it's been too long again since I filmed a video. I'm going to share my root cellar with you. I've already shared my greenhouse with you many, many times. Today it's gonna to be the root cellar. So, my root cellar. As far as we can tell, this root cellar was originally built in about the 1920s, 1930s, somewhere in that range of time. And um, some of the original parts of the root cellar are still here, but, and obviously the main hole that was dug is original. But in about the 1970s, the people that bought this property um, off of the original owners did a bunch of modifications to it. So I'm gonna show you those and kind of explain to you why they did that and then share with you some of the things that I've learned, mosquito mania, um, some of the things that I have learned about keeping food in this root cellar and what works really well. I'm also gonna give you kind of the dimensions of it, how far it is in um, from the main slope, just um, for those of you out there who are thinking about doing a root cellar like this, I'll just give you some of the dimensions just so that you can get an idea of what works. This root cellar works <laughs> chickens in the background now. If it's not kids, it's chickens. If it's not chickens, it's cows. If it's not cows, it's going to be dogs. And weirdly enough, Cypress hasn't been coming around for the last couple of videos, but there's probably a reason for that. And that is that it is now warm and I'm going to have to get some bug spray. Um, it is warm outside right now. And so he's usually um, underneath. We have an old trailer that's parked up by the forest and he likes going underneath there because it's cool. In the winter time, he likes to be out and about because he likes the cool temperature. So that's why you haven't seen him lately. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, no, not back to what I was saying. I'm gonna go get some bug spray on before I continue this video because I think that I'm probably in the worst possible location for mosquitoes because it's nice and cool and dark right here and that's what the mosquitoes love. So I'm gonna go get some bug spray. I'll be right back. There, that's better. If anybody has any surefire ways to be able to combat mosquitoes during really extreme mosquito seasons, not just where you have a few mosquitoes flying around, but I'm talking about serious mosquitoes, uh, please let me know. I am an advocate and I use essential oils for uh, many, many things. And I've made several different bug sprays using all different kinds of essential oils. And they work if there's a few mosquitoes, but they do not work if there is a lot of mosquitoes around. And we are having an incredibly bad mosquito season this year. And I have actually resorted to using the bad like wood stuff, wood spray, the stuff with the DEET in it, which, pardon me? Hello? <laughs> there's a voice that just came from the root cellar. I have a feeling it was Dan. Hello? I've asked him to come and help me. I have a couple of old tubs full of um, full of sand that are still in here that I am not strong enough to take out. And I asked him to come and help me. There he is. <laughs> He's here. Okay, we're just going to remove move these um, tubs out of here, and then I will be right back. <sighs> Holy mackerel! Those were heavy. Okay, that's all part of the video because I'm also gonna talk about how I store stuff in this root cellar and give you a couple of book recommendations um, of books that I've learned a lot um, from about um, storing food in root cellars and cold rooms in your basement, which I also have. So I will show you some of the original stuff and then I'll take you inside and hopefully I have a bright enough light that you can actually see in there. So this is the front of the root cellar and over here, so this is the gate that goes up to my house and at one point this was actually um, like a little paved pathway but it is no longer there's just a little bit left okay and then it comes down here and goes around in in this way so when we first moved here both sides looked like this so this is original i'll let you get a closer look at it but as you can see it's pretty rotten now <clears throat> so when we first moved here the first summer I took this out and I just put up this um, rock retaining wall and all the purpose of this is is just to hold back the dirt on this side. It doesn't have any structural um, or it doesn't affect the structural integrity of the root of the root cellar itself. 
um, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. But this is originally what was used to hold back this bank. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, maybe this summer um, as I did on this side. Here, you can see this is all railway ties. So these were actually um, added on with a concrete roof on in the 70s, these ones, but you can still see some of the original wood that was in here. And then I'll just show you up here. So this is the top of the root cellar. This is the mound. And then these are two vents and they are just like a PVC type of pipe. They're about four inch um, pipes and that is what's used to air out and vent the root cellar down below. Okay, I kind of feel like this part of the video is gonna be a little anticlimactic because it's really nothing fancy. But I almost feel like that's part of kind of what makes this kind of root cellar awesome is the fact that it's relatively simple and it isn't uh, like, it's not gonna cost a ton of money to build a root cellar like this, which I think is really important when you're trying to start up a homestead. Okay, let's go. Okay, so this area here is the front um, sort of hallway that goes into the main root cellar. And the door is about two inches thick and it's solid wood. And it's not a fancy insulated door or anything, just a solid wood door. The floor is dirt. And then on the walls, these um, logs were used as the walls and I'm going to show you something in a sec but we're actually going to have to start figuring out a plan to replace a lot of this stuff because it is starting to rot and then all up here the roof is just um, the railroad ties that I showed you outside so this hallway here is about 12 feet into the hillside just to give you an idea Building a root cellar like this on the inside walls like this, if you're going to be using logs, I would recommend using treated wood. And generally I wouldn't because treated wood is filled with all kinds of chemicals. Um, either use treated wood or cedar because these are just pine logs and they are rotting. So we're actually going to have to replace these. And then this is the main root cellar. And this door is the same as the last one. It's just two inches of wood. So much cooler down here. <laughs> okay, we don't have a lot of great light, but hopefully you'll be able to see enough to get an idea. This is the most simple root cellar. <laughs> so it's basically, um, there's a dirt floor and the walls are all dirt. So it is just a big cave, basically a big dirt cave. And then these were obviously added in, in the seventies and they hold up, you can see over here, um, above this, this is actually, there's a concrete slab that is the, the roof of this um, root cellar. And then over here, this wall, they put in a concrete wall here as well. And then this part of the doorway here is also concrete. So it's pretty sturdy at this point. And then I'm sorry that the light is so bad in here, but all the walls look like this. It's too dark to show you kind of all the way around. Maybe I can, enough light, no. <laughs> um, but it's just dirt like this. So these root, these ceilings are eight feet tall. And the dimensions of this room are about 12 by eight or so, a 12 by eight cave. <laughs> so as you can see here, I have milk crates. These work really, really well. I got this idea from the previous owners. This is all they pretty much used to store all their stuff, um, their root vegetables in, and they work really well. They actually, um, just keeping them in here in these with the air circulation with no sawdust and um, or sand or anything. I've done it with carrots, beets, and turnips and they all lasted an entire winter in these bins. And then I also, because I'm doing, a, I'm storing a lot more food than the previous owners did, I also use some black tubs like this and I layer them with um, damp sand, which I have, in a, I have in a large supply on our property. So I use damp sand and layer carrots, beets, whatever in here with, uh, with one layer of vegetables, one layer of sand and so on all the way up until it's full. And I've had these last for a long, long time, like up to 18 months. They don't taste very good by that point, but they're still not mushy um, in these. And then I also use um, old, these are protein lick tubs for cattle. 
and I use these and I haven't put any holes in the sides or anything like that. This is just layered with sand and um, the vegetables the same way I showed you with the flower pots there and this also works really well and I've not had any issues with rotting or anything like that. So there you go. Pretty basic, pretty simple. <laughs> Sorry, if, but like I said, it's a bit anticlimactic. It's not super fancy or anything. I don't even have any shelves or anything in here. What I do is I just put pallets on the floor and then stack everything on top of the pallets and I can fit a huge amount of food in this little root cellar. Um, my plan for this year is I am gonna be putting shelving up along this wall and along this back side. Um, what I've done before is just taken, I have some plastic shelving that I've put in here and um, on that plastic shelving, I put kohlrabi, cabbage, what else did I put on there? Um, Brussels sprouts and you just pull those out of the ground and shake the dirt off and then put them on the shelves and they last up for a cup up to a couple of months um, like that in this root cellar just on a shelf. So my plan is to put um, shelving along one whole side of, of this root cellar so that I can um, store things like that because they don't do well closer to the ground and they don't do well in um, tubs like these. So that's my plan. So as you can see, super basic root cellar, nothing fancy but it works and that's what ultimately matters. I think a person could spend a ton of money on building kind of the ideal dream root cellar, but I think for most of us, that's kind of out of reach. And unless you buy a property that already has a skookum root cellar in place, something like this is probably more practical for most people and it works, like it actually works. I couldn't believe it um, the first year when we had carrots in there that were still crispy at the end of the season. Um, but even if you can't do something like this, I wanted to show you a book that gives you so many different suggestions on how to use um, a root cellar and all different kinds of root cellaring kinds of ideas. This is something I would really recommend this book to anybody who is actually looking at actively building a root cellar. Amanda, I was thinking about you. This book I would highly recommend getting if you don't have it already, um, because especially before you actually get into building a root cellar gives you plans for how to build several different kinds of root cellars and then how to actually store your food in the root cellar and there's even just like you know a hole dug in the ground with hay bales on the top there's so many cool ways that you can store food root cellaring idea without having a, a bigger root cellar like this so this is a book i'm going to put a link for it down in the description box below for you guys to go check out super super recommend this book it's one of my favorite um homesteading books actually is root cellaring natural cold storage of fruits and vegetables keep your produce harvest fresh in your own basement porch garage closet or hideaway so this one's a really good one okay so this is my second recommendation for a book that has to do with preserving food without freezing or canning it's not specifically about root cellaring although there are root cellar suggestions in here it has more to do with learning how to preserve and put up foods in old ways that don't have to do with um, freezing or canning and again this is another one of my favorites and one that i would definitely recommend when you're talking about um, storing food i've learned a lot from both of these books. So super, super rec highly recommend both of these. So um, when I am putting up my food, when I'm actually starting to store stuff in the root cellar, as long as my garden, I hope my garden actually survives this year. That's another story for another day. But um, if my garden survives this year and I end up with, a, uh, with some produce out of that, I will be putting it up in this root cellar and I'll take you along with me as I store it in here. And then as it journeys along as the months pass, I'll, I'll bring you in every so often and show you how everything is doing out of this root cellar. All right, so there you go, my friends. I hope that you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two. I would love to hear about your experiences with root cellaring. And if you have any tips or tricks that you would like to share with our community, put them down in the description, or not description box, put them down in the comment section below uh, because I notice a lot of people read the comments and we all can learn from each other. So if you have any tricks, for root cellaring, storing food, or anything else that has to do with food preservation, let us all know in the comment section below so that we can learn from each other. I hope you guys all have an awesome couple of days until I see you again. Bye everyone.